We begin with developing news this morning. The euro dipping after the unexpectedly strong result from France's left wing dealing a major upset to the far right in weekend elections. Markets now attempting to price how the next parliament will work given no party will have a majority. You can see the euro at one spot zero eight right now. Euro stocks futures also pointing in the green here. Markets are expected to open slightly stronger when trading gets back underway today. 5,025 is the level you can see up by around 15 points. Investors now will be assessing the implications of what could be an extended period of political limbo in France. Sylvia Amaro joins us live now from the Kepler Chevrolet trading floor in Paris with more on how it all unfolded through the course of the weekend. Syl, walk us through this surprise outcome in the French election. Good morning, Dan. Well, one thing was clear is that the French voters came together to say no to the far right. If you look at the results, the Rassemblement National is only the third biggest political force at the National Assembly. And when you look at the turnout figures, they are above 60 percent. They are well higher compared to those that we had seen back in 2022. So the message from the voters from that point of view was a clear no to the far right. However, when you look at the results as well, well, it is clear that France now has a hung parliament. It is split. So it remains to be seen, really, how they are going to work together, if at all. Think, thinking about these results, it's clear that uh, the French president, Emmanuel Macron, now has a very tough job to decide who he's going to appoint as the next prime minister, whether he's going to choose someone from his own party, the second biggest political force at the National Assembly, or whether he's going to give that role to someone from the left coalition, because the left coalition is ultimately the biggest winner from yesterday's vote. Now, with that in mind, I want to show you these remarks from Jean-Luc Mélenchon. He is the leader of one of the most far-left parties at the National Assembly. The president has the power, the president has the duty to call on the new Popular Front to govern. It is ready. The new Popular Front will respect the mandate, according to the votes cast for its candidates. Our given word will be respected. The new Popular Front will apply its manifesto, all its manifesto and nothing but its manifesto. Now, when you think about also the future, really, for the far right, yesterday night, Marine Le Pen, who used to be the leader of the Rassemblement National, was also very clear to say that, in her opinion, the win for the far right was only delayed. France will be totally blocked with three groups that have more or less the same influence in the National Assembly. We are losing one more year, one more year of unregulated immigration, one more year of losing purchasing power, one more year of a blowing up of insecurity in our country. But if we need to go through that, then we'll go through that. So now, when you think about France and the future for the second largest euro economy, then it is very unclear to understand what's going to happen next. And ultimately, though, one big concern that investors will have, and we'll be discussing that throughout the morning here at the center of Paris, really, is what does, mean, what does this mean for the fiscal position of France? Because, OK, they said no to the far right. When you think about a hung parliament, that's never good news for a country in order to implement new laws and, indeed, bring down the high levels of deficit that France also has. Indeed, Sylvia. And uh, no doubt traders filing into that building that you're in this morning, also scratching their heads, wondering what's going to happen next here. And you also have to wonder, how is Marine Le Pen thinking about this too? A major upset for her, but also a significant upset for her sidekick, Jordan Bardella, uh, the 28-year-old who hoped he'd be prime minister today. So uh, do we know who is on that shortlist to, to take that top spot? No, the answer is a no, because at this stage, though, we don't know which side of the political spectrum Macron is going to be looking at in order to give that role to someone, the, the new role of prime minister. The current prime minister, which indeed belongs to Macron's uh, party, 
has said he's going to resign. He's going to do that this morning. But ultimately, that's seen as a tradition, really, in the wake of the uh, election. So let's see if uh, the president, if Macron, is going to give Gabriel Attal that same role once again, or whether he's going to feel the pressure to give the role to someone from a more leftist party. Going into this election, though, one of the key criticisms to the coalition of the left was they did not have one single person to say this is going to be our prime minister if we win this election. So that has been one of the key criticisms for the left. We don't know at this stage who that person might be. But one thing is clear, though, when you think about the outcome, it is very, very, very unlikely that Jordan Bardella is going to take that role despite his successes in the recent term. But I just want to make one final point that what was the reason why President Macron actually called this election? Let's not forget the context here. He called this vote basically a month ago in the wake of EU-wide elections. And the, the reason why he called for this election was because French voters had the shown a strong support for the far right at that vote. But now, thinking about this outcome from a domestic perspective, it is clear that that's not what French voters wanted, at least for now.